start recording right now. So yeah, for anyone, let's let's pretty much get it started on time. So it's four. We're gonna go with this session. So for anyone who missed the week, weekly meeting from last time, there's a recording. The page where we're keeping all of this is um, Seek a Home Documentation Team page or a Collaboration Team page. So that's in the chat box right now. And as far as um, we'll do a little overview of kind of like the bigger picture of where we're at in terms of the builds. Uh, definitely review last week's if you haven't seen it. And we're going to get into the, co the collab collaboration review. I'll go over that and how, how we collaborate in CAD today so we can maybe get, get started some things in CAD because that, that's like the biggest thing I talked last week about the CAD build. CAD build instructions, builds the materials, like the holy, holy trio of having specific documentation. Let me um, start. So, so John, why don't you, to go ahead, what you got? Just, just over you on yeah, logistics yeah. and timing. Mm -hmm. So on my log on the wiki, uh, anyone can edit this. Um, recent changes, so <clears throat> just putting them out there, October 10th, that's the start date for construction that we're going with. That is uh, framing, not foundation. Um, this presentation is also going to keep the Google Meet link in case anybody loses it. And uh, our funding, you know, we got a decision. Nothing's going to happen before December, so uh, I think it's important. Everyone involved knows that we're bootstrapping this, and uh, maybe after December we get something going, but uh, I guess that's where we're starting. And let's see. Can you guys still hear me? Yeah. Cool. Um, <coughs> great. So I'm trying to collect some of the assumptions that we're basing our plan on. I'm not going to go through them all, but this is a, a, a place where a lot of input is going to be good. Um, Marchin, you'll recognize some of these. Um, and the whole point of this slide is really just um, so that when people look at the plan, if they miss a meeting or they, you know, they don't show up every week, they understand the context in which we're making decisions. Um, and this is, you know, well, I, I'm going to be adding to this as I uh, sort of catch up to where Marching is, but um, these are sort of the latest numbers on what this looks like. <clears throat> so the the two hundred five k version is like KC. We have to buy land. Um, <clears throat> we've got utility hookups to do. The 170k version is is more like St. Joe or we get free land. Um, and so that's really the, the dominant variable there. And uh, the next series of slides is really just my best guess at, you know, if somebody's coming to this cold, what do they need to know about everyone who's currently involved in this? And this is not comprehensive. This is really just me sort of scratching the surface. Um, and so if anyone has any valuable input, I think it'd be cool to add to here, just so we know who the players are. Um, I have the full you know, viewable Gantt chart linked on this presentation. Um, this is not like a great Gantt chart, but I think it's a good start so we can see what all of the concurrent tasks are and how they overlap. And really, when I look at this, what I see is a whole lot of preparation for a very tight execution, <laughs> which is really not a surprise <clears throat> to anybody involved with this. But you know, hopefully, this thing will continue to expand um, and just get more and more robust and detailed as we develop the plan. Mm -hmm. um, oh, it looks like that's kind of oh, sorry. I forgot. How, I forgot what direction to scroll. Uh, and then the critical path that Martian, I think, is going to bring up later is linked here as well. Okay, so, it, it, you know, my my goal here today is to get a, yes, this is good, this is written correctly, or no, we have to change something. Uh, we don't have to do it right this second, but Martian, like, this was my first and best, you know, draft at what the heck are we trying to do here. So that if everything else goes wrong, we all have something to rally around as like the why. Like, why are we here? Well, why are we doing this? So I'll give everyone a second to read it. <coughs> yeah. The link is in, in um, let's see. So th this isn't linked. It's just I highlighted the color because it's the link most important. Uh, so as far as today's meeting like this, um, the actual working back from John. Oh, sorry, I'm, I, I was going to keep going if you... Yeah, keep going. Keep going. <coughs> so, like, 
there, there's not a whole lot of content, but like after after a sort of like the mission, we get into the actual execution of this. And so like over time, these slides are going to be built out: execution, logistics, financial projections, and management communications. And so like that framework, everything that we're doing is sort of going to fit into one of those categories. And that's it. That's all I was going to present. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully every Friday we get in a habit of. Um, of uh, like a routine where we can go like uh, everyone is on the same page and we get the updates and we're organized and so maybe like 10 15 minutes at, at the start of each meeting That's yeah nice thing. yeah and for overview on timing let me um share the the critical path here just um what i what i'm kind of working with it's a di similar to john's um but kind of a little more granular and something so so this thing here, the, the thing that's actually coming up for, for us for next week is is this phase right here, July 11, 15. We've got a few people coming here to our site, actually, as far as the CD go home finishing the, the build interior, so electrical, plumbing, cabinetry, interior finish, and all that. So that's what we're doing, and that's kind of after this, we're in a good position to really start finalizing the bills and materials and things like that so that this is kind of like what we're looking at here, this build here, October 10. And we'll see where these ones fit here. Our goal is actually four. So this one is like the key one with the um, five days there or so with a pretty rapid build and learning from that. Um, see what happens from there. And as, as we get closer to this, so basically after, I mean, we still got to go through a phase of engineering, you know, submitting the plans, doing an engineering, basically, basically engineering, uh, structural engineering stuff. Uh, permit, like if we're going to Kansas City, uh, those kinds of things. Um, we got to talk about land acquisition, so, uh, things like that. But and and then a lot of work on instructionals, uh, so that for the October 10 we've got a crew ready to go. Now, uh, the other scenario on the build October 10 is like we talked about things like oh let's get a bunch of unskilled people into the show at that point. Maybe maybe not. Like. The, the priority is right now to prove that we can do the five days with pretty much complete build out uh, means up to finishing. I mean, that's crazy, basically allowing a thousand human hours to do that. Uh, that's the main priority. If we uh, start involving people uh, just as a learning experience, of course, that will slow things down. So we still have to make that decision on whether we allow that, maybe save that for the first one, and maybe allow the public to join us in future ones. It's definitely a good idea to do that in, in order to give people a perspective of here's this comprehensive build that you can get a real deep dive into learning how you actually do all of that. We'll see what happens for the first one on uh, October 10. So yeah, to get there, um, and to get there now, documentation. Uh, let's, let's review what we learned about last week uh, in terms of documentation and let me share my screen again here um so here's here's um let's talk about this we talked about like the generic review from last week literally the, the open source collaboration philosophy how is it possible to collaborate as a large team and then how do we start applying that to actual real product development but basically we talked about the idea that if you have the triumvirate of cad uh, detailed CAD files, detailed builds and materials, and detailed build instructions. That's those three should all be representative of one another. So for the CAD, uh, as we actually go forward, the latest file you can just actually click right on that, and this doc is um, throw it in the chat box. So it's the last thing in the chat box, but this doc. Um, you can get in there to click on these things like the, the CAD file so you can download it. So download um, download FreeCAD 16. We say FreeCAD 16, there's newer versions but but 16 is fine, it's the simplest to use. The bill of materials, if you click on that, that's the whole slew. It's like, it's a working doc, it's not refined. So at this point basically we're doing the final build la uh, finishing next week and now organizing all these I mean, look at these there's like 20 tabs in here we're organizing all these tabs into okay here's our final deal this is what we've got here's the final cost structure when we started this i mentioned the cost was thirty-three thousand. i think actually right now it's more like sixty thousand uh, because the material materials just went up over the last two years um 
build build instructions we're going to work on. So we talked about modular breakdown allows you to to um, do this crazy process of having a lot of people collaborate. You do have to have a lot of like situational awareness, and that comes from okay, here's one a development breakdown of the entire project. If you click on that link, so in this in this development template, you've got 20 items of standard product development. But you also go to the enterprise level where we, where we document all the other uh, core assets of this and. Um, explanations of things like like what is like you know what is this step three cad well that's described here so this column here describes the items and here's the actual second column is the work process that's that's the development breakdown um, now you can so just as you develop the, the breakdown of the development process you can break down the master cat so we've got now some master cat files if you click on that so some key files right here but each of these files are actually further below like say you've got you know, the whole assembly, house assembly master file here. Well, you've got the actual details of the individual, individual wall modules, which were, a lot of it was done last year. Um, the major update, so once again, modular breakdown, let's see. Uh, for that, you, ne you need, need to break, well, in the master cat that we're doing, we're going down to the very, very modules and down to, like if you click on this here, um, every piece in this module. So you can actually count this, okay, this top, bottom, left, mid, mid, right side, all this, this sheeting here. We're gonna have to go to all the way to the end of um, exposing the detail of each part because FreeCAD allows you automated bill of materials gen generation once you have that level of detail. So we're gonna get down to that level of detail at the end of the day. Now, uh, how do you understand the the modular design well you have to start with this is actually within this document right here but effectively like 40 48 modules this is the first floor this is the second floor exterior this is the first floor interior this is the second floor interior so up to about 69 modules uh, now actually there's since we this was last year uh, since then, we actually we were adding a bathroom on the second floor, so it's a second uh, two floor two bath system, and that just provides much more value. It's, uh, so we're going to put another set of two walls here, like you have this double wall. Here's the bathroom on the first floor in this area. I'm going to put this double wall here, also on the second floor interior to get the second story bathroom. Okay, so I'm going back. Um, yeah, so. How do you know how to design these wall modules where we define everything and starting, you can start with wall module 101. How do you design a wall module? So I should actually link to this slide six here. Uh, each wall module is a basic design. And we actually, um, since last year, there's some actually some modifications. So a lot of the files have to be updated, but uh, Effectively, the wall panel is your top and bottom plate, and then four members. This is 16 inch on center, kind of a thing. It's overbuilt. It's two by six lumber, and stuff like that. So this is like how how our wall panels look. Um, and the process, what we're looking at. So we've been screwing things together. We did that during last year's uh, build of the CDK Home Three. Uh, but one good idea is like if if you have the less skilled scenario or you're like the first time builder it does make sense to screw things together so if you mess up you can you can unscrew now in a professional scenario if you're doing this in production maybe it's useful to screw in like maybe put in a couple of screws or the minimal number of screws required to hold things in place and then perhaps somebody nails it off because you do have to have a particular strict nailing schedule like one on the framing itself modules to modules or the sheathing to the modules. So so actually we'll probably retain a lot of the well depending who we have showing up, like if it's all professionals, probably they might prefer oh we'll just like nail gun it together. But definitely it is useful, especially if you're prototyping to to do removable fasteners like screws. Hey Martin, all right. are you are, are you thinking about jigs for this first build? Yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. To to the um, based on what what makes most sense. Like, if we have a bunch of modules of these simple wall panel modules to knock out, just putting like a a, a story stick or some kind of a jig, yeah, it would make sense. So you don't even have to measure. You just basically take the four pre-cut stud pieces of lumber, 
you've got the four foot cut and four foot cut on the bottom. So yeah, we will, and that we want to design that to to make sure it's the you know it goes the fastest. Uh, I I could definitely see like a story stick to show you. Okay, you just lay it over the top of the, you know, say you lay your this wood on the table. You would put a story stick, say, on the bottom or top piece, and then without having to measure, you're literally just holding it and screw it or nail it together, things like that. Uh, and you can do a lot of different things like throughout the process later on too. Um, so on the interior, we're using currently still using beadboard, three three eighths inch beadboard. On the outside, it's oriented strand board OSB. But this the panel overall panel is going to uh, simplify to this. Like there used to be actually another top set of uh, these things. This is basically where the panel where the beadboard ends up. Uh, on the bottom because these are nine foot modules so the beadboard is eight feet and it's going to be about 12 inches above the bottom so you got to put this this framing here which is also used for the utility channel for the electrical which I won't get into right now but that's like your wool panels one on one it's uh, super simple and of course the windows and doors get more complicated um, so that's the hey, Marchin, are yeah. you adding the um are you putting the insulation in and then wiring or, or, or wiring into each of the modules? Or are you coming back and doing that as a second step? Not sure if that's changed. You're right. And that's a, that's a good question. And it does change because of codes. So codes okay. require that at the, and is that why you're asking because of codes? Uh, just, just curious. Cause yeah. I know we did a different no, it's, it turns out that the actual workflow there's a big inspection, so you get the foundation inspected, then you go into the, the rough-in inspection, which includes the framing, rough-in plumbing, electrical, so all the structure kind of stuff. Well, it turns out that at that phase, none of the insulation is in so that you have all the wiring exposed. And for that reason, we're going to go with, okay, just put up the stick framing up front, and then once we have, once we we will do the outside sheathing, which is the OSB. But then once we get through the first inspection, we can, well, the, the rough in inspection, then we actually put in the, with all the electrical at rough in, then we put in the, the insulation. And the same is gonna apply, it's, it's actually, you know, our learnings have been, yeah, let's do the, the house wrap also around on the outside, uh, all after the, all after the that particular step let's see the the sheathing on the outside I think you actually can get the you typically do get the the actual uh, house wrap at the rough end phase too so so that probably will be on and there's gonna Sorry. be a, yeah can, can you can you clarify real quick so like there's the foundation inspection then the yep. framing inspection is there a separate rough-in inspection, or does the rough-in occur so the, during the framing inspection? Yeah, the rough-in, and I don't know exactly how Casey does it, but that's like, I'm counting that as one. It's either like, I don't know if the same inspector does it, but rough-in means that you've got framing, electrical, plumbing, all at the same time. Because you can have the whole house where everything is visible, the guts are visible, you've got all the plumbing visible, you've got all the electrical visible, the plumbing is actually checked for pressure at that time. So everything has to be accessible. Nothing is wired in or connected to the grid yet. That's later. Uh, but they want to see the, the electrical boxes installed so everything is wired up, like you have wire stubs into each electrical box. All the wires would be at that point laid in, elect in the utility channel that we have. Or actually, we're actually going around walls. The way we're doing it still is we're doing zero uh, we're doing zero poking through studs. Maybe there's like one or two places, just minimal, but, but we're not routing wires, not routing wires through studs just for the sake of the ease of that step. Because to fish the wires through takes much longer than making one connection at the utility box, running the entire thing along the wall. You, have to, you don't have to do any of that fishing for every single wire, and there's gonna be 20 wires about 20 wires uh, we've got 20 breakers or so um none of that that's that means that electrical is going on in this going in in a second um so meaning putting the electrical boxes we've done a bit of that 
Uh, we haven't laid out the wire yet. That's what we're actually going to do that uh, July 11th through the 15th. We're going to do all that and time ourselves how quickly that actually does go. Now, there's going to be a one place like the bathtub, for example. You can't put it in the bathtub after the framing is in. So the bathtub, both floors, has to be in. Now, what does that mean for <coughs> the insulation behind it? That means we have to put an insulation behind that. Uh, so therefore, the inspector, uh, we're not planning to put wiring in that area there. The, the only wiring that will be there would be there's actually a vent for uh, the fan vent. So it'll be minor wiring in there. But uh, little exceptions like that can be had at the rough inspection where like you can't put in the insulation or the bathtub after the walls are in. So that has to be in. The, the wall sheeting has to be behind that bathtub and things like that. Uh, so that's like uh, the only exception. And that's, so that's the rough-in phase. And basically the July 11th to the 15th right now is we're pretty much gonna get to that rough-in phase. And I'm actually gonna try to get an inspector out there. I mean, either before or after, I mean, they don't really have to be there. But I am gonna try to get one there, so make sure that everything is legit. And, and we, we could also tell them, hey, here's our cat, take a look at this, because um, everything is pretty much in there. Um, so we could do do something like that as, as another vetting point for all the technique. I forgot the guy's name, but the, the engineer that you yeah. met, that you drove to meet, um, yeah. is he who you're thinking about doing? And the reason I asked this is because um, if you just get the inspector out there, I'm concerned there's too much variance between inspectors, whereas that dude has seen it from a higher level. I don't know. What do you think? He doesn't do, do electrical plumbing. He does smoke oh, okay. only. Uh, there's another inspector I'm trying to get my hold, hold of who do, who's done thousands in the KC and say St. Joe area so he would know and once again I'm, I'm in contact I did call up Dave, this one guy David Noble he's a contractor from Kansas City who's trying to get into more of a mentorship role he's, he's very excited about what we're doing and all the machines and stuff like that so I'm going to try to get as much of that feedback from all kinds of so I mean that's a call out for everybody I mean the point of this thing, the people who should be at this meeting are now, we're getting to the point of, okay, this is going to be for real contractors and real builders. That's the part of the audience that's going to be on the build side. I mean, of course, we've always been talking about the DIY builder. But, I mean, our learning is, yeah, that's not going to be, like, once we get this thing going, the, the majority, the vast majority is going to be done through turnkey builds. And, uh, and really, the most valuable person persons to to attend these kinds of meetings and in fact I mean we should make an active call out we're saying hey what does the most efficient lowest cost highest performance ha performance house look like you know optimizing every single aspect and yeah let me make one comment about optimization just to uh, update everybody on what we're doing just the perspective like for example yes so we're preparing for the electrical install and i was still working out the breaker boxes trying to optimize some of that we are actually going to get away with a 100 amp panel we were at like 105 <laughs> or 110 but we're actually we're we're quite efficient and, and the, here's what what happened uh so yesterday i found out about combination washer dryer non-vented it's condensing you don't need a vent. That saves us about $600 in, in labor. You don't have to run a vent, and you don't have a, to run this big wire because this thing actually uses way less energy. So it's actually a 120 volt device where typically you, you need 30 amp 240. So this is actually this LG 4.5 cubic meter. Go on my log, you can take a link of at what that is. But it doesn't need a vent. And like I never heard of that. You know, I always thought that if you have one that doesn't have a vent that means you're getting the house all wet not true there's ones that have either a condenser like a heat exchanger or a heat pump that actually extracts the water out of it they, they look more expensive but actually they're not so actually um, 1800 for this combination washer dryer which actually saves you time because you never you just let it go a lot of people complain that oh well the drying cycle is a little longer. Some people say it might take longer, but I mean, the point is that you just need to put the clothes in, you don't have to move them, and then you just set it overnight and it's pretty quiet and stuff like that. So it's actually time saving too. Uh, at least for my use case, it would be time saving. I just walk away. And you never have this problem of letting your clothes in, in your uh, dryer, washer like overnight and getting them all funked up. So, so this saves double washing all the time. 
Uh, but anyway, so, so you look at the number, 1,800, wow, that's kind of scary. You could get individual ones for like 500 and 500 for like the cheapest washers, dryers are like maybe a thousand. But then again, this thing is so much more compact and it makes a lot of sense for the CD go home. And then, then the other thing is that if you think about the amount of effort you saved on, here's the venting system, which means an exterior vent, another vent, connections, and the, high, the electrical, it's actually about $600 in parts and labor. Uh, so it's actually, so it's like buying a $1,200 device except this thing is, is at least like 50% more efficient on water use and electricity use, so every year you save about 75 bucks. So it's kind of pretty much pays for itself. So in, in reality, it's actually a cheaper, more ecological, less less work, less space option. Cool. Uh, really want to go with it. There's only one brand that's at the 4.5 cubic foot size, which is kind of like enough for a family. But yeah, reviews were really cool. So, so like with those kinds of optimizations, like that, that just makes me think. It's man, imagine every every single detail. Now, I think that that example of what we're doing here saves you a lot of build time. Um, actually, it's going to save you money in the long run. But every single optimization out there. So uh, this kind of gets me back to the point of let's let's talk to the contractors and the builders, see if we can actually get any people like that aligned to these these. Um, these meetings, because if you look at the you look at the the spreadsheet, the cost spreadsheet, yeah, I mean it's getting tight there. It's tight as in we're you know pretty much validating all those numbers there, and it's and it looks good. I mean it's it's lower cost option than anyone else, so we should be able to get a lot of people involved in this on the economics part. And of course the dreams are to show that oh because it's open source and everyone's collaborating, we're actually getting the price and product quality up, price down, product quality quality up stuff like that so I mean that's that's still the promise and, and there could be yeah I mean uh, but it's hard to like get the pe people to show up because once again I mean, it's the same cultural issue of collaborative literacy all right so let's go back to let me share back to uh, the document here so let's talk about the CAD collaboration and actually since last year there's one little piece of evolution that uh, we always talked about it but the interface the it's called mod uh, contract first design or interface design this aspect that in order for you to collaborate in a major way um, if you, and I mentioned this concept already if you can define how all the interfaces work like define a coordinate system and you, you know how everything is located then you can have large people large number of people uh, work together so locations contours of where the walls are things like that like Z heights of different features then you can um, you can actually do it. So let's see how this actually works. So if you so I do suggest download this FreeCAD 16 if you want to be involved in this because this gets basically into this major huge accounting job. You know the house is literally as simple as you know you've got this piece of lumber, you got this washer, you got this roll of electrical wire, these components, and it's just a very long list. I hear that Sears houses at the turn of the 20th century were like 30,000 parts. So we're kind of like the Sears house kit um, like model here for the 21st century with digital design. The parts list is going to be huge and we're going to break it down completely. It gets into the only way it's manageable to do is by large teams trying to do this. So let's see how this works in practice. Um, and let's go through this. So this is actual file. So if you click on this CAD, you can download this. Uh, this it's actually called Electrical 64 because the latest electrical was in there. You can download this. Um, so you download it. <coughs> It'll download. I'm going to open that up. Uh, here it is. So I'll show you here. It's opening up. This is all online. You can you can work with me. You can roll along here. So this is the top view. This is like the most complete file. Uh, top view. So things you have to know is like one hitting in your navigation style. Make sure you're on gesture navigation. If you download this file, everything should be you should receive this exactly as is. Does um, this update like a Google Doc as we're all working on it? Yeah, sure. But it's in there. It's in there, right? So it's the first, so it's there, right? 
Um, no, no, no. I mean, like, as as we're if ten people are on CAD, yeah, voting and stu- yeah, got it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, actually, okay. Here, editor. So, so this doc is publicly editable. Like, feel free to add to this. But this is, I mean, this is what we're doing today. So, feel free to now. You can insert a slide. You can take notes, or whatever. Um, but here's the process for large scale collaboration. Define the interfaces, and we'll go through this. And then, if you know this kind of stuff here, okay. You got say, let's take the first 24 modules. And start drawing them out. You can go to if you go to the master CAD files, you get to here. You can look at the individual files. Like these are this is wall module one. That's what's in the other doc. Um, when I when I num- number these here one through twenty three, those numbers correspond. So here you got one through 23, and this goes up to like 69 or so here. Now, um, so so many people can work on these. Now under each, you want to download like, the actual file go, ends up going here. This is the version history, so there's like three different versions, and stuff like that. Uh, so if you got to make updates, you simply upload a new version of this file. All right, now, how do we create these individual, what kind of files, like in order to be a seamless process that, that ends up in a summable bill of materials, we have to do two things. One, you got to draw out the module, and then you have to break it down into parts and make sure that every part is in the part tree. And you have to strip down this part tree. So, so for the automatic bill of materials generation, you want to strip down your part tree. Now, what's the part tree? Part tree is this stuff here. Like all the stuff you see, the folders. Uh, this is kind of like you can't get a bill of materials. It's like folders and organization here. You can't really get a bill of materials. But at the end of the day, what we'll do, say we got this. Um, we got, let's take one item here, like plumbing system, which right now is actually like, it's actually a big thing. That's too big. Let's, let's look at the first floor framing, all right? Um, so you see all these folders we're not going to have that at the end of the day we're basically going to have a, a, a big wall of items like, like this one in blue which shows like this kind of like this blue box which means it's just like a solid shape so in the bathroom for example alright so say we got that door right there right well you see that showing up as one thing in a, in a part tree it's this bathroom door thing right here well it won't do for a BOM so we have to when we work with these files and generate them we have to make sure we're keeping track of the one is like the editable file and then the the one maybe like this entire file which is this this whole thing which is useful if you want to build a different house because if you have a bathroom door on the, on the second floor well turns out this exact module is going to be used on the second floor so you want to like share both like the wholly editable file, the one block file, and then the fully individuated file with individual parts. So you need three types of files to work seamlessly and then end up with this huge BOM. Uh, now, I said two types of files. You really want to do three. And let's just walk through this today. So you're going to do the, I said, the sketch of the whole thing where you've got uh, all the editable sketches in the CAD. Then I'm going to say like one, well, I'm actually going to put that one, the third one. So the third one is going to be this dumb block entire module file, like like what I showed here. Like this is one block. This doesn't You can't break it apart in this CAD have here uh, just one block that's like the third piece um, I call this I mean, what do you call it uh, this dumb dumb file it's like the call it the dumb dummy file dumb file because it doesn't have a lot of information it's not broken down into it doesn't contain like the underlying editable information 
So anyway, so first is you do the fully editable files. Second, you break it into individual parts, and then you have this dump file. So those three things. So this this is important. Uh, so I'm going to turn that into red. Those are the three things we're going to be working on for hundreds of hours. If we want to get a master file from which then you can actually generate a building materials. Like for example, it'll tell you 500 uh, two by six, nine foot pre-cut studs. You know, it'll get you all of that. And there's a process for, for extracting the build materials. And we can fully automate all this stuff, but the first thing is you gotta get this all into CAD and 3D. And then after that, of course, you gotta, as we talked about, you gotta know how to find everything and how to upload everything. So save, <coughs> not both, but three of these files. In version history, I showed you a sample version history. Uh, like this example of a version history. This is wall module one. It has a bunch of different files. And here you can see some of that kind of activity in the comments. When you upload, you can input a comment. But here we started, say, with the. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Can you share your screen by chance? I'm not sharing my screen, so. Um, yeah. I see you, but not what's on your screen. That, as I, I don't interrupt you, but I, as I said in the chat box, okay. like how long ah. we get. Hey, you're up. <laughs> okay, yeah. so so there's a second meeting going on. Okay, um, Jim, so go over. Let me give you a link. Get out of there and go. <laughs> we switched. I don't know if you got the email, but we switched to. So there's a. Um, go there, and you'll see it. Oh. Okay. All right. Thank he you. is there, and we'll shut this one down. So anybody who's a, <laughs> a derelict in um, the Zoom meeting, okay. Um, so Jim's going to hopefully join us there. And yeah, so we are sharing this. So uh, if you see in this version history, like the first one was actually the one with the sketches, like with the full detail. Then then you could see, it, oh, like we simplified, like made this dumb object. But anyway, like keep all these in a version history. And then we can put notes in the wiki too, like you can edit these notes and stuff like that. This, you know, you can type whatever you want here and you know, put in your notes. I won't save that. Um, or here you can upload a new version of this, fi this file once you get it. So we're going to keep uploading new stuff over this and therefore we don't, we can keep working over the old files because it's just updating what we had already to build on the former work. We're not losing anything here and then finally at the end I mean, we'll publish our book and you know we'll clean it all up as a final repository and stuff like that okay but let's go through an example of what we do okay so let's I'm gonna go into free and show you a basic process of this so actually you do want to go into this this master file this 64 electrical called electrical 64 thing uh, which I just downloaded uh, just before just now so you can download this in FreeCAD 16, you can click O and get you the blocky thing. You can click P and it gives you perspective view. So it's like O and P, that kind of thing. But the, I, I like to work in the perspective. Um, okay, but if you notice in a big file, so I'm going to hide, actually hide the in interior walls here, the framing. There's another layer. So this, this file has everything in it pretty much. Uh, but here it has templates. Um, so if you look at this, so there's this template here. So under templates here, like there's a whole, whole bunch of templates here. But this is what I mean by interface design. Here I've defined a positionally correct interface location that tells me a lot of stuff. Like it tells me where the walls are for the first floor. It tells me where the interior walls are and things like that. Um, well, this actually happens to be the bottom of this and it's labeled, it says it's first floor bottom of beadboard. That's the interior sheathing location. But if we were to go to the first floor skin and beadboard, yeah, you'd see that's that's actually, that layer corresponds to, well, actually the, that's just like the bottom beadboard on the utility channel. But what I'm saying here is that you can sketch out locations of critical things, like here's the sill plate. So this is like super critical. This is where modules one through 24, one through 23 are gonna go. Like one is right here, two, three. So when I do, when I say module one, I know it's this, it's, it's uh, you look at this, there's this orientation thing here, it's X, Y, Z, it's a Cartesian coordinate system. 
And you can see that X, like if I look like this, X is going to the right, Y is going into the screen. And you can kind of see this three-dimensional arrow thing. Make sure you understand how that works. What's X, Y, Z so you can orient yourself. And Z is vertical going up. So naturally, if you were to show the actual house, yeah, that would be like going up that way as you expect. That's the foundation here layer. Uh, this thing has got the foundation on it. It's got the framing and stuff, some stairs and stuff. Um, but that's, so we start here on the foundation. And this, so you'll, you'll, you'll see that each of these items here has a pos positional information with it. Therefore, if you define a coordinate system, then you can now say, okay, I'm going to build module one here, two, three, four, and so forth onto 23. Now, where is, who can answer, where is the point zero, zero, zero in this, this sill plate location, the bottom plate? Where is that? Can anyone answer that question? Because you have to be able to orient yourself like that because coordinates will go from that zero, zero, zero. Anyone? Does anyone recognize where zero, zero, zero would be in that? Uh, it's the uh, bottom left. Yeah. On the top of the foundation. Yeah, the bottom left. It's right this corner right here is zero 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 how do i know that well you got to look at your dimensional arrows here you know that the origin is to the left it's at the bottom of the z and it's like towards the screen not into the screen on the y which is going into the screen there so zero 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 is this point here now what happens so this is the sketch and here's how a sketch works if you double click on it yeah, that's right. It, it's, when I double clicked on it, that's what it gave me. And this is like, this is the sketch layer. So here is where you take FreeCAD 101 and you have to know how to do FreeCAD. So anyone wants to collaborate on this, you, you have to know these basics. Uh, but zero, zero, zero is this point right here. And you can zoom out. And this is your 16 by 32 feet. There. Okay, so if I'm going to work on module number one, how do you know you're going to do it at the right look? How do you like in the sketcher? So there's um, we typically work in part design. There's a sketcher. How do you like if you want to start designing this module here? How do you do that? You have to find out first on what plane is it? What, what plane is that? Well, if that's module one, so do people understand the correlation between, you have to understand the correlation between this diagram <clears throat> and this from the top. Module one is right there, and module one is right there. So actually at the very origin, which is right here, is module 17, 16, and 17, right? So that's my origin so module 16 and module 17 will be here okay what's the most convenient way to design say you're working on the first module right so i'm going to say do the first one which is located at this corner while you look at your your sign your your um, coordinate system it's in the yz plane okay so if i go into the yz plane so I go into start my sketch and I go into YZ. Um, well, YZ plane, I, I'm going to cancel out of there. YZ plane would be like right there. Like because, because it will always get you start the sketch at zero, zero. And zero is right there. So it would start that sketch right there. So what you actually have to do is offset it. How much? By 32 feet. That's 384 inches. So this is like this critical accounting that we have to take. So you're going to be, first of all, we said YZ, right? YZ plane. And it, it shows you it's that plane right there. 
this plane. Um, now, what happens if you reverse, you have to pay attention to reverse direction. Um, let's see what not reversing it does, but, but that's YZ, that's gonna be, so if I cancel, YZ is gonna be this plane that I'm looking into right here, like if you see right here, YZ, all right? So if I wanna draw the first module, I would draw in a YZ plane as the most convenient location. So let's, let's see what happens. I go to YZ plane, I'm gonna do 384. There, it gave me that, that point. Um, that should be the like the 384 on the well actually on the x-axis because the YZ plane is offset on the x-axis so let's see if I can start drawing now what am I going to draw now I'm going to draw the wall module so this is how everyone can do this what's a wall module it's this so I'm going to do wall panel 101 and I'll draw it there okay so I know it's got a bottom plate and I'll start with that Let's do a bottom plate. Um, and this is, so here, I won't go into how exactly you do this, but this is Sketcher. So this is a basic, super basic tutorial. In this level of endeavor, uh, as long as you can learn to Sketcher, you can add lengths to it. So if it's a stud, it's 1.5 inches. It's gonna be 48 inches long, cause that's our um, bottom plate there. And hopefully, so I did that. And now I'm going to extrude it uh, by 5.5 inches because it's a 2 by 6. And what did I get me? I did that. So what's it saying to me? It's, um, it's a little off. So it drew it. Yes, it did kind of draw it in the right location. Um, but what I would say is, um, yeah. You want to reverse the direction there, you see? Because we drew it, it drew out into the wrong direction. Um, I'm going to go back to the model. This pad right here, I'm going to double click it, reverse it, okay? So it put it, put the stud at the correct place. Uh, so this, this is my 48 inch thing. Uh, if you measure it, yep. You're like 48 inches or so. Uh, so this gets technical, but uh, for you to be able to edit and, and um, you know from scratch, which is what this this is about here, you have to be able to know this how to orient yourself in this coordinate axis. Now let's let's just um, so that's that's what I did here, um, but let's try that again. So I want to do the one next to it. So module number two. Um, I'm going to go once again to the YZ plane. Let's see what happens when I reverse direction right here. What I'm expecting that to happen is to do that which we did after we reversed it after double clicking after we did it. So I'm going to reverse that direction and also put it at 384, which is um, 384 inches is, 20, uh, is 32 feet. So there, so it, what happened there? Oh, it's. I think yeah. you had XZ selected, not YZ. Oh, did I do that? Okay, let's trash that. Um, so once again, our orientation, we know, so uh, you've got this interface file. And just another comment on this interface file, like what, you know, we, we should probably you have to measure out 48 inches over. So it would be useful, like when you're designing a whole interface thing, to, to break this down into like 48 inch chunks so that when the next person builds upon it, they know exactly where 48 inches is. So, you know, we can have this basic interface file, but a better one would be where it actually shows the 48 inch location uh, locations. And when you get into further details, you'll see that if this is 32 feet, there's eight of the four footers here, but on the short side, you can't fit four because you have this this solid part here. So it's actually be it's the distance between this point and that point. So this thing actually needs to move over. Like if I if I were actually doing this here, like I would have to move this over. Um, I have to move that. 
uh, over that, that distance would have to be actually 5.5 inches because we know that the front wall And that distance there is, is you. See, we know that the front wall is here, so we had to move this this baseboard here. Um, but a better in interface file for the like laying down all the foundation parts here. Oh, it would be where you have each each of these members um, already pre-cut, like pre-marked, so that we could show. Oh, well, this one actually goes on top of this one. So each person can have limited information actually start. Or, you know, working in the correct location. Okay, so let's try it again. We're gonna try YZ, right? So we're gonna do YZ. Um, okay, we're, we're gonna do YZ. 384. And then reversed, because we think that's gonna get us the right thing. That might be good. Um, so, yeah, yeah. So you notice that if I escaped out of that, see where I was put? I was put like looking from the inside. Yeah, I kind of want to do that. Why? Because, well, it's convenient that when I pat it out, it's going to actually build out the wall in the correct direction. Okay, so anyway, I've got this sketch. Um, Let's see. Okay, so um, I wanted to build this next one here. So did I get it in the right location? I think so. So then I'll I'll do my uh, my second one here, and then I'm gonna pat it out 5.5 inches. Uh, a little more than uh, 5.5. Yeah, yeah, it's it's good. So yeah. So basically, you really have to look very closely at these arrows to see which plane you're going to operate in. Because obviously, if you're building the front walls, you want to be in an XZ plane. Uh, now, why not build up the thing from the top so you'd be working in an XY plane? That doesn't really work well for you because, uh, to continue here, like if we're building up this one, so this is my quick sketch of the, uh, the full module. It's actually going to start padding these out for me as I go along. So there, there. Oh, there's my wall module. Done. <clears throat> there it is. <clears throat> so that's how you design. Can somebody replicate this process? That would be the thing to do. You have to learn how to work, basically, orient yourself here, and then draw flat shapes that then turn out in the correct geometry at the end of the day. Like that's how the first wall module, it's not detailed, it's not correct. I mean, the first floor is, I mean, it really looks like that. It's got, it's a little different, right? What I drew there was my thing here. That's not really it, but you get the picture. Uh, so then you can, each person can basically get one of these and uh, finish them off to the correct, correct version. So uh, the, the practical exercise is, and I'll leave this off with this meeting. Like, uh, um, see if you can follow this meeting and actually practice getting into the correct orientation plane, drawing out a sketch, then padding it for a two by six, which means a piece of lumber that's one and a half inches by 5.5 .5 inches. That's standard dimensional lumber of the United States. So that's the depth there is 5.5 .5 inches. From here to there is like 5.5 .5 inches. Uh, that's standard dimensional lumber. Um, and here you can see that in the property. It's the dimension is 5.5. .5, okay. So accounting. So you see this blocky thing here. Accounting shows, well, first you want to name it like wall module 1. Uh, you notice it's got, I'm going to erase this other sketch here. Note that if I hide it, or you can still keep it, but if you hide it, you can still see the sketch. So I'm going to hide my first floor by clicking the space bar. Look at that sketch, fully editable. You can move this around. 
Um, You know, you can keep editing this thing until it's right, and you can put in dimensions to it. Now, this is one module which is which is useful for how you design individual modules, but we said at the end of the day we need all the parts. And it's going to have some of this blocking also. It's going to have more than this. It's going to have sheeting. It's going to have blocking. It's going to have electrical and stuff. So we start with the framing, but we break it into parts. How do you break it into parts? So here's what we do. So say this is our module. First of all, we you, what you want to do is you can actually copy and paste into a new document. So let's actually have me control C and then copy and all the details. Create a uh, new document and paste it into that new document. It's in there. You remember this? Yeah. Uh, how is it oriented? Well, this is actually at this 32 foot mark looking at the front of the house. You see your coordinate axis here. So uh, note where you are. So you're here. But the point is, this thing, or at least the bottom piece, remember we put it in the correct location so you can actually work off it. You know, you can, this, when you go back to editing it, so here I can go into editing it. Typically I like to you know, hide the solid, edit this thing. So you, remember we put this 5.5 5, 5 .5 inches there to make it off the origin, so it's actually the correct, exact correct location. So now we can kind of keep reworking it. But we said we're interested in extracting, let's say this is my first stud, we want to extract it. Um, after you finish this module, this is, say this is your finished beautiful module, um, first of all you save it. So control S and save it as well module one. And then you go, so the, the, what I talked about today, I talked about upload everything, this is our master index. If a thousand people understand one A through E, they can find this. You have a thousand people working on this at the same time. Um, you're going to put it master CAD because that's where master CAD is. We remember master CAD was broken down into each wall module. So you scroll down and it's wall module one right here, wall module one. So upload new version of this file. Choose file. Wall module one right here. It's only 16K. This one right here. Do it. So this is a sample testing module uploaded for demonstration purposes. Upload that file. And that's what you do. So here, I just did this right now, this new thing since April 28 was the last upload here. Now July 1, we got the new file. So now another person in Japan can download this and work from it. So actually you guys can actually feel free to download this and you can actually work on the same file. You can try to replicate what I'm doing. But we go back to this thing and we say, we need three file types. So we just now got this module master file positionally correct with all editable sketches. We go to step two, break it into individual parts. Because I can assure you that one, you think, okay, well, that's a pain. Like, I got to do all of that. Well, I can assure you that without doing that, uh, you can't scale this process. And last week, we talked about that we would like to design for infinite scalability of this process. So that means if we're going to build a different model of this house, we can readily generate a bill of materials, instructionals, animations, 3D video games, like massive online assembly games where you actually practice to build a house. You can do anything, but you've got to have this level of detail. So do this. So let's show how we break this into parts. Okay, how many parts are here? There's six. Um, and I won't go through six. I'm going to delete me a couple to make it. I want to demonstrate this so it's clear what's happening. Uh, so I just deleted that one. There's things like that's coincidence. So I'm going to delete that. Now you can move that. I can take this one, uh, delete 
delete this one. So I got like, I'm going to delete this one too here. So that I have these three pieces for demonstration purposes. All right, so this is my wall module. Um, I want to break that into individual pieces for accounting of bill of materials. So this is basically like, unfortunately, this is a huge, huge accounting accounting exercise once you get to the full house. Now, uh, but think about this though. Say uh, you snap up a block in Kansas City, Kansas, and you want to build an entire neighborhood. Well, our goal is to train thousands of people to do this. So imagine you get a thousand or 10,000 people and they design that entire block in like a weekend because they follow this process. So you got like 10,000 people going on CAD there, uploading the individual files for like 50 homes on that block. It's doable. Uh, I haven't heard any, anybody do that, and no proprietary processes have a workflow that allows for that kind of kind of work. So this is actually innovative. It's like nobody does this, but what we're designing for is mass participation. Okay, so I go back into the sketch, and I want to extract these parts. What what I'll do then is, so I've got this one module one file. How about this? Why don't I save this, keep the original one, so for accounting, always keep the original. Okay, control save as. I'm gonna say module one, part one. Okay, now save it again. Uh, Cause I'm gonna basically extract three file, three, three individual items in, into three different files so that I don't lose anything. Don't, don't necessarily wanna put everything into the same file uh, just just bear with me here. So wall one, part two, and then I'm going to save again, wall one, part three. Okay, so now I've got on my desktop, I mean, I typically, what I do is I typically operate on my desktop, but here, like, uh, you would want to create yourself a folder, wall module one. Um, I'm going to clean up my desktop here so you guys can see working files here. Uh, so I'm going to hide all this stuff, which is just my uh, desktop here. Um, so if you if you see what's happening here, these are the relevant files. I downloaded. You see, I was working on Electrical 64, where I got that module interface file. Wall module one was the was this thing here that I started with, and then I created these three other parts. Well, so let's throw all that here into wall module one. So you got this in this folder. And now, well, how about this? How about we just do um, save? Yeah, just make sure you keep saving stuff. And um, so now I can go into this and just basically start opening up these individual files under wall module one. So let's take part one, part one. Okay, so part one is going to be this one. I'm going to just say this. That, that's the part one. Uh, so I'm going to erase everything else. And then... Um, now, you don't want to move this. If this part was actually positionally correct. Well, actually, for part one, let me do it as the, as the bottom place. So that was positionally correct. So what I'm going to do is erase part number two. And maybe you gotta, well, you gotta select that. You gotta, I kinda gotta just hit delete on the select and delete, and that goes away. So this sketch now has got the part one. Bam! Well, that's it. So now we've got, um, save as. So save as. This is wall module. part one and this is where you have to just think about what am I doing okay I'm saving module one part one yeah yeah we're, we're in that file make sure that the title of this module this this is part one so you want to label it properly so that once you you know you're further down the road you can say here rename it um, you know base uh, four, you know, four foot base plate you know and we can get 
exact convention for what exactly we call each part. We don't necessarily have to do it right now because it's very easy to change the name here. Okay, so you got a base plate here. Great. I'm gonna open up the second one. And you see that this is like just major accounting and you'd think like this is silly, but it's not. Um, but it does take a lot of work. Um, so part two, part two is gonna be this one here. So I'm gonna erase this one. Erase that one. You can you can erase things by just clicking on and hitting delete. So you got part two. So you want to save that. But here, this this is the since these are the parts. Well, let's rename it properly. It's uh, part two. You can call it part two. Uh, stud one. You know, stud one. Uh, and then you know, save that. Open up the third one. Part three. So this is my part three. Well, I, I might as well rename it right here. It's like part three. All right, cool. Uh, to edit that, well, part three is this one here, so I'm gonna delete this one. There. Uh, so uh, I got part three. Okay, so now let's go back into, what are we doing here? Like, let's get more perspective. So. We're breaking things down into individual parts for automated bill of materials generation. Save in a folder. I did that. Because um, what's happening here, each of these parts are the actual parts in the actual correct locations. So I got these three parts. Well. The next step here is, I'm going to save, um, I'm going to go back to my, um, and it's like you, you really got to pay, you got to have a fresh mind to do this because you got to just account for things. So what was I working with? I was working on the module one, well module one, right? So I did that one as the, out of the three files that we need, that was the, this was wall module one the CAD file type one. I'm just like re making them very clear. I can, uh, um, well, we can open that and we can save it as, as the, I'm just setting up placeholder files. So I'm gonna set um, CAD file type two. Okay, I'm gonna save that as that. And then I'm gonna save it again as as CAD file type three, because we need to have three types of files for multiple purposes. And once again, it's like, I apologize for this seeming like crazy, but if we do this, then yeah, the power that comes from going through this. And and the point is, yeah, I mean, this really has to be broken down so that many people collaborate on this and do this if we want that complete detailed file where you literally have a build procedure extractable from this down to every single part. So the point is, if, you, if you're teaching uh, novices to do this, every single part has to be in the cat. Okay, so... March? Yeah? Uh, so does FreeCAD do any kind of report? So if you have, if you have your assembly of all your different parts out there, um, are, is FreeCAD able to generate a report that says, I've got wall yeah. module, uh, six wall module ones and four wall module twos? Etc. Yeah, if you know Python, you can do that. Okay, copy. Thank you. You got it. And I'm just saying that that what we're doing now is doing a manual process that any single person who can just follow a very basic procedure, i.e., these three, these uh, point one and two, and this and this you know there's a lot you kind of have to study this a little bit, but once you get the hang of it, it's like you just crank this out and you gather 100 people that understand this and you, you have just built yourself this entire house in one hour. And I kid you not, that's what we're trying to get to. Because, why? So let me give you a little why here. So let's go to, um, I'm gonna see home, uh, I'm gonna tell you why. And that is because of the conceptual design. This is Rosebud, but 
um, I'm going to show you what else we got. Like, for example, if we go to, way down here, uh, do we have this? Identical. Not a single different part than Rosebud. This will take you months if you're going to cat it up in detail. But you can do it in one hour if you've got 100 or 200 people. This is the expanded version of Rosebud. 2,000 square feet with another 1,000 square feet at the back. This accounting allows us to do this kind of, generate this kind of cat. And, as you said, Dave, uh, Python automated. So like in the future, we'll be able to automate a lot of this process. But we have to start at the basics so that we document the hell out of this so that you can make any kind of a version of this house. And um, let's see. And I wanted to show you this thing here, which is, is just permutations of each of these squares is a 256 square foot module. Rosebud is here. It's this 16 by 32, two story. Like the dark is two story. So imagine you have a little tower. You can have hundreds of different configurations. You can make a whole city out of these. Or like a ro bunch of roadblock row houses. You can do one with a courtyard out of these. All of these are 1,000 square feet here. That's, that was the point. But the point is that you can have an infinite number of permutations of 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 square foot houses. So that's why we're going through these details here. So that's just a motivation point. Um, now, so we were at, so we did, we have this full file that we've got all the details and editable sketches. We're working on joining those individual parts into a master file with the individual objects as selectable parts, as dumb objects. And which was in, um, for example, one like this, this module that we saw before, like the dumb object, just re-referring again, uh, like for example, a dumb object like this, you know, these are all, these all modules are just individual modules, they're all dumb objects, but at this level it's very useful to have these ones because you can use these as building blocks that you can now design a new version of the house. All right. So how do we get in to make one of these as a super dumb object like here? And one, with, so if you look at the part tree, you'll see this appear and I saw, showed this. <clears throat> so this is interior, <clears throat> interior wall framing here uh, by the stairwell. So it's this thing. This one item, it's not broken into individual parts. Right now, we're getting the thing where it is broken down into individual parts. So how do you get that? Well, um, we've got our, well, once again, it's like it's easy to get lost. So let me like shut these things down because um, I'm talking too much here. Um, so I, I showed you my folder of parts here. So the part one, part two, part three, and then I put a placeholder for the file type one, which here we already have. This is the complete file with all the details and you can edit the sketch. So, so the first type of file, that's done, okay? So we can close that one. So now we're looking for the one with the individual parts. Um, so one module one, part uh, type two the one with individual parts but not editable okay so this is that uh this is just a placeholder so actually what i have back here already don't really need that just erase it it's just a okay so here you just open and you don't do open you 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 do what's known as merge so merge parts one two and three you select them all. Oh, I, can, I only can do one at a time. Merge one. Wait, did I do that right? Uh, file, 
merge project. I wanted to do part one. No, I think I did, did that wrong. See, so once again, no, I want individual parts. That's not what I want. Uh, so once again, let's try that again. Merge. Part one. Yep, that's part one, all right. See, it appears as a, as a part here. I'm going to merge part two. <clears throat> there it is. And merge part three. There. So now I've got three individual parts that are editable. Um, I mean, they're still editable because the sketches are underneath here. Um, and where does it put us within the framework of what we talked about here? Individual parts. Um, as dumb objects. So for the purpose, so to explain, for the purpose of BOM generation, I mentioned you want the part tree to have no folders, no like subfolders like the sketches and so forth. So we're going to have to turn these into, uh, basically, you can clone them. You can do, you can go into, What's the easiest? You can make copy, you can do like, I, mean, I just, you know, you can go into clone. It's this thing in the draft workbench, it's this thing, clone it, and you basically got yourself these three parts. So if I can hide these, so if I put spacebar, I hide these, and now I'm actually got, these things are just clones, they don't have the sketches underneath anymore. All right, so erase these, get rid of these ones, Delete. Yes, delete. It'll spit out the sketches that were underneath there. Delete those. So now you got these three dumb objects that are accountable in your bill of materials accounting. But you might want to just rename these like this is the four foot, four foot base plate. Rename stud one. Here I didn't name it correctly. I should probably call it like stud two, but call it part three. Um, so there you go. Now, this is a file, so I'm going to save this file. This is the CAD file type 2, dumb objects, but separate. Control S. OK. So make sure you upload that ASAP. As soon as you get it, upload a new version of this file. So we're <clears throat> file type 2 of wall module 1. Uh, basically, separate objects yeah. separate objects, uh, dumb file. So it's dumb in, in case in the sense that so I gotta go to this. Uh, make sure you, you got it in the right place. It was under the wall module one. So file type two, which I just did at 519 here, 520. Okay, so we're running out of time. Um, type two, upload. Okay, so now you see that, and you can kind of see it. The first file had all the sketches. It was a little bit more memory. Now it's we stripped the sketches out, and it's 7K. And now what we're going to do, um, well, I should actually file type 3. I'm going to copy, just uh, copy and paste. Uh, so this is going to be my uh, type 3 file. I just copied the last one because it's already got the dumb objects. But what I want to do is now, now condense it into one dumb object so that when we're doing large um, designs of a different house model, you easily manipulate one module at a time without worrying, oh, it's got subparts or whatever, because that can get confusing in the part tree. Okay, so here, type three. Okay, I've got these three individual things. I want to collapse it uh, into one part. How do you do that? You do that in actually the part workbench where you go into part, make compound, uh, maybe there's a simple way to do it, but I'm, what I do is I make compound and then I 
create simple copy of that compound, which is that. Erase what you had before. It spit out the three individual parts, which you now erase, and you're just left with this one compound. Nothing else. It's that blue thing, which means it's a solid, but now it's just one thing. You can't separate it anymore. So this is my file type 3. Uh, so I'm going to upload it here. And then that's my file type 3. Um, uh, sample roll one file type three uh, and then upload that there so these three files so I showed you how to generate these three types of files and the awareness that's required here is to understand what each of these files is good for. So for example, if you find that you made some mistake in this file, you can go to the original source, the file type 1, where everything is editable. All right? Second, if you're doing bills of materials, you got to go to your version history and select this file. So what you do is you click on that file. So here, separate objects, dumb file. I want to get a, after we did the entire house, so we come back to this in a month, we did the entire house. Now we want to create a bill of materials without having a very complicated part tree like you saw in the other files, the big uh, electrical 64 file. It's got a lot of mess in there, a lot of folders and sketches and it could have other things. And specifically, the reason why we don't use FreeCAD higher than 16 is because higher than 16, the part tree starts inserting all these other features like these planes that really don't, they're just planes for location there. I don't even, I'm not sure how to explain it, but the, the, the part tree in the higher versions of FreeCAD inserts, injects all these other pieces of information that are no good for our bill of materials purposes or just like the simple design that we want to do. So we, uh, I like to stay in FreeCAD 16, it's just simpler. Now, this is not to say that we can't use the more advanced, like now there's like assembly workflows and other things that are possible within FreeCAD. But those kinds of workflows do, do not allow for mass collaborative design. That's why we're doing this very rather basic. I mean, it's got a few steps, but it's rather basic. Anyone can learn this, and you know, once they know FreeCAD, they can learn this rather quickly. Uh, design for scalability. Okay, so the file type two downloaded. Once you want to get into generating the the final final bill material, so. How do you do that? How do you download it? You just click, so you just understand the part tree. You can click on this. When you click on the proper date, it will download that file. So I'm going to now download that to the desktop. Uh, so I'm going to cl close that one, not to get confused. So I just downloaded that one. And uh, look at that. I've got the one with the separate files, right? Separate individual pieces so now if I know I have another one of these modules elsewhere now I'm just gonna just uh, do it for fun it's gonna put it in the same place um, I put well I shouldn't have done that one I want to what I want to do is merge the file type to this one so yeah basically like I actually have two of these things in here right now you can't tell but the bill of materials you can start simply extracting the parts out of this. And if these have the correct names, you can summate them and say, okay, I've got 100 studs, 200 base plates, 300 wires, 3,000 screws, and, and at that level. So you can get a, an exact uh, bill of materials. Uh, so that's how it works. So that's, that's for the uh, bill of materials. The file type 3, that's for design purposes. If you're designing a different version of the house according to all the permutations that are possible, and people will want to build all kinds of variations. You want to build yourself a, a micro house, like a 16 by 16, 16 by 20, in units of four. You can build any iteration in increments of four feet. 
using the system. Uh, we like kind of to think about 20, uh, 16 by 16 sections, and that's like a li good livable space. Uh, but that, the file type 3, uh, the cool thing about it is, okay, so let's, let's actually uh, close that and, and open up a file type 3 to see how you work with that. So here it's one object, so it's one module. Well, that's the, now, uh, because you have one object, you have property values and you can actually move this around. You can reposition it, you can copy it, things like that. So now, once you have these individual files, what I do is I go to draft and you can do things like move and copy these, these things. So um, I can select that, move and copy it. So I just made a copy of that. Right, so I'm designing my house now. This has got two wall sections now. Uh, but you'll see each one of these will have properties. It's at that point very useful to whatever like this compound, this one here was, you know, position zero. Well, if I put this one at position like under Y, it's gonna be like, ne I guess, negative 48. Yeah, it put it, it put it right next to it. The other dimensions are not good, but basically you can then work with um, numbers here in the properties as far as locations and things, or you can just use move them manually. I like to workflow I use is just take a look at you hit on the keyboard one through six, so that's this view two, three, four, five, six. You can have all these different views, which are also selectable here. Uh, you can also select different views here, where I'm showing. But, I mean, you can simply move these things. You can go draft, you can move this. Trick here is you actually gotta do, put it into view, and then you can take this thing and move it in that plane. If you're in a plane, you can move it around in a plane. That's a useful way to, to design. It's easy to design that way. Or you can change the properties and the position. But there's thing about it. The point here is, this is for design purposes. Imagine if you had like all those three individual pieces this will all get all like combobulated and you won't know what's what. So that's why here, like you might, you know, you probably have a name like wall one. This is your wall two. And then uh, wall three. Yeah. So if you know that you have a base plate, you have your, your uh, interface file that says, oh, that's the actual contour of the, um, foundation, then you can put these on the rim of the foundation, you'll be in the right place. So that's the concept of using um, interface design files and using these three file types to generate, to now get into generative design, because you can um, work this to make any, any kind of a house shape. And if you look at, so here it's a simple example, but an advanced version of that is, you know, if you look at our file 64, this file here has been generated doing nothing but just the process I showed you. Um, so, you know, first floor, second floor, and stuff like that. I mean, this is all, do, doing that process, you just move the different coordinates, you have like whole things, you have all these layers here. So, um, and this part tree here, it's not good for bill materials, but it's good for working because it's organized in folders. So. There's, uh, you want to save the different file types for the different purposes under the same part tree, which which then you know where everything is. Um, yeah, and that I mean that makes a, a lot of sense to me as far as the purposes for the three different file types. And I mean I have I have worked in uh, SolidWorks a bit before, and so some of the some of the interface icons and, and things like that are quite similar there. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. that that sounds good. Yeah. So um, next steps would be like if a person wants to actually, well, there, there is a specific task. So in this file, like if anybody wants to actually start practicing this and you, you, you have to know where to upload the files, we showed that, the different file types. If you don't have the three file types, just save the one you have. And that means somebody else can download it and work further on it. But actually, if you notice here, um, one detail you'll notice that the second floor so um, second floor is a little shorter, isn't it? Um, 
And what is that? What is that all about? Well, uh, in the last version of the house, we had an eight, eight foot story uh, walls on the second floor, but we decided actually to take it to nine. Why? Um, the reason is that there was a detail that became very simple once we went to nine, and we can't do it with eight. The detail specifically was if you look at the house, um, if you just look at the CAD model, this rendering of it, there's this decorative band at the top. And what you see up there is actually a facade, which we built up there. And it turns out that to build that facade above the wide, it's a fake thing. There's nothing, it's a, just an empty thing. There's space behind it. It's just so it looks good uh, with this wide band. Uh, but the eight-story floor means we had to add this facade at the top for aesthetic purposes. If we go straight to nine-foot floors, uh, we don't have to add the facade because the building is that tall already and the band fits into place. Otherwise, the proportions of the house are kind of weird and the aesthetics are, just aren't there. So simply by raising, by increasing the, the modules from eight feet to nine feet, we're going into a major major labor savings like like to, to create that facade up there you have to it's a lot actually a lot of work it's all this flat sheets of material you've got to bolt on these vertical supports it's just it turned out in practice to be by myself i did that and it took me like a week to do uh, so it's it's like uh, way too long so we decided to add the cost into the materials like eight foot studs versus nine foot studs uh, but it's worth it because it saves you a lot of labor in terms of the buildability. Now also what that means is that removes all the eight footers from this design. There is not a single eight footer anymore. So everything is nine foot pre-cut studs. Before we, we had eight footers and nine footers. So this, that's actually great in terms of accounting and it's great for the purpose of build. Now what that means is that in our, um, <clears throat> in our design uh, in our CAD, where everything that's above module 23 means it has to be expanded up to the <clears throat> to the nine foot version. So anyone who's watching this video, Logan, anybody else, um, we have these modules should be relatively good, but going up to the second floor, um, second floor exterior, all these have to be expanded by one foot. So hopefully that's easily doable. And now if we had the three file types that I described, that would be readily doable. So let's see if we have that. Nope, we don't have that. And what happened here was actually, so I know what happened here was um, Coder Jeff, he actually just, um, we should find him again, I can't get a hold of him. Uh, he just programmed that up in, in uh, Python to basically generate these modules. So he, he didn't leave any other different file types. Um, but the way, like for example, how does this one look? Like the eight foot panel, uh, what happens <laughs> if I open it up? <clears throat> um, yeah, he's got actually, yeah, it's pretty good. It's actually the separate build materials quality level here, but it's not editable. That's the thing. So without the source code, we cannot work with this here. Now he did upload the, let's see this. No, I actually haven't, I don't know where it is. Like he, he might have. Uh, we don't have the code that generated this, so we just have to redo it or generate a little script or, I mean, there's there's ways to automate and, and eventually we'll do that, So, but for now we can do either manually or whoever can do Python scripting or there's a function called spreadsheets and um, there's a spreadsheet workbench. It allows you to actually do this kind of stuff where you, where you type in parameters and you can change things on the fly. So there's all kinds of ways to do it. Um, but for consistency, you want to just make sure that we get all of these things to be like just individual uh, items in the part tree. And that's our <clears throat> final product. So, so there's a lot of work to do. There's uh, the 24 modules on the second floor and create the type one, two, and three files. This, this meets our type two file with the individual parts. And we can just simply combine these relatively easy to get the type three. Uh, and it's like, oh yeah, just um, <clears throat> make them into a compound create a simple copy and so forth. It also could be automated. It's like you ask, well, why do that? Why, you know, why do we have to save that extra file? Well, it saves you a bunch of time. Like, 
whether you have to do this for every single module, like the amount of time, like once you have to do 48 modules, it adds up, so it's much easier to simply ins uh, download the correct, correct file type. So we do that. It doesn't cost us much, and memory is cheap, and ideally we have all these different files for the different purposes. So yeah, so if anyone wants to take a stab at it, there's plenty of work to do here. Uh, and all of this would go into <coughs> the CAD files, as I mentioned, under second floor exterior. All these have to be redone to nine foot. Now, do we raise the window hole? No. The window hole remains the same. We just um, vertically, we have to expand up a little bit and things like that. Uh, so that's, that's pretty much it. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's definitely some files here that any novice can pretty much take on and just you know just examining what we've discussed today and last week you can pretty much get your bearings around and feel free to ask me you know, email me um, if you want to get involved and it really takes you just start doing this and, and get busy on it and do this documentation yep sounds good sounds good so we'll end it here unless there's any questions we're gonna that's basically the process for how you can get a whole bunch of people um, I don't think there's any scale, scale limit to this. If you had to do like a city, literally of a bunch of these buildings, you can totally divide it. You can say, okay, I'm going to, this hundred people do th these two buildings and so forth. And you can really divide it just like I discussed today regarding yeah. the modular breakdown concept. It's, it's really powerful. Uh, I don't know anybody who does that, but it's definitely doable and we definitely want to try that as soon as we can. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, if you have... <laughs> You have your city block laid out on uh, in the set of set of floor plans basically or the dimensions of the floor, floor plans and you can have one group say okay I'm gonna go take this one and then in that group they can divide amongst themselves and say okay I'm gonna take modules one two three and etc et and just start uploading that way yeah 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 as long as everybody knows where to upload you got the whole layout of the whole, say, you know, you're building a whole block of houses. Well, you can number it house 1 through 40, divide it to 40 teams. Each team has a wiki page or a few wiki pages, and uh, you can have many people working on... Uh, first of all, there's individual modules within each house. So, I mean, the breakdown is just so many different steps you can take on at the same time, as long as you know where each thing goes. So you have to study a little bit about the dimensions of the house and the basics. But for the basic level, just to do the walls, you know, 16 by 32 at this this house, or if you want to do another combination of permutation of this, it's like 16 by 32, figure it out. Yeah, and then automate it. And I am excited about the idea of, once you have the, the fully detailed CAD, you can definitely create a massive online multiplayer game where you have this pile of materials and people actually take them and start building the things as a collaborative exercise with many people online. So I think that's completely realistic. I mean, there's software and there's game engines that make it pretty readily available for people to do well, that. I, you know, I, I think with uh, sticking with the proving, proving the concept, mm -hmm. right? So it's like getting that, that first... Uh, first house built and showing like hey this this is feasible and this is what it came out to be in execution yeah um <clears throat> i mean i i think i think that will be huge for for yeah. forward momentum yeah. but also uh i think there's some value add in having a cad model of your house because if if you're ever going to try and do any modifications repairs etc you know you got to it, it, it's 80 years later and you've yeah. got to change your plumbing and oh, yeah. you know you can actually see where all that is that's that's useful but absolutely and that's like in any manual you'll have like an exploded part diagram you can have that for absolutely everything in this and then think about once you get the large scale 3d printers and these are digital files you can actually start 3d printing these modules or parts and things so there's so much you can do once you have that yep, yep. house is built of uh, polycarbonate that was formerly used as other things. I like yeah. it. Yeah, there you go. That's exactly right. And um, yeah, you can get the complex geometries. Imagine the panels with like plumbing pre uh, and, and electrical boxes already, you know, pre-printed in and stuff like that. It's completely doable. So that's actually, I mean, that's quite realistic. We got to get the infrastructure up for the large printer and the large shredders and materials handling. That's, that's the next steps after that, but one step at a time.
Yeah, that that mm -hmm. that would be great because you're also reducing the number of cuts and uh, holes that you have to drill because you're printing your part as used rather exactly. than from the lumber yard. Exactly. And that's why this detail in the CAD model is, is important because once we have that, you can do that, that's like bam. You can, and scale models too. Like you can start modeling these as little scale models that you can 3D print as is right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks so much for your time, Arjun. Yeah, thanks a lot. So yeah, anyone feel free to take on the modules on the second floor. The task for next week, expand them from, from the 8 feet to the 9 feet for the next iteration. And that's actually gonna to go to the engineer. We're gonna submit that. That's like ASAP. So that, that's a critical task right now. Uh, we submit the whole structural model and the engineer gives us, gets us uh, basically the package that we submit to the building department with all the, the, all the blueprints and stuff like that. Yep. All right, well thanks. See you next week, same time. Take care. <laughs>